Thank you for joining us for this update on Idaho Library activities over the past year. So I want to start this update highlighting ways library workers are supporting and leading in their communities, and then share some thoughts on what's on the horizon for the Idaho Library community. Four other staff members are helping with this presentation, Shirley Billadu, Stephanie Bailey-White, Gina Persicini, and Tammy Hollyhouse, and we'll be trading off for different parts of the presentation. Our mission is to help Idaho libraries build the capacity to better serve their communities. We do that by providing professional development and consulting services, managing statewide systems for resource sharing and online resources, and developing and implementing statewide programs that meet common local needs. We also leverage state and national initiatives that support our mission. An example is Smart Investing at Your Library, supported by FINRA's Investor Education Foundation. Our two-year grant project delivered financial literacy resources and workshops to audiences through nine public libraries and a number of partners in South Central Idaho. The Buell Public Library reported one of many successful programs, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire?, was offered at Buell High School, and more than 200 students attended to participate in the interactive game to learn about credit scores and credit reports. Idaho libraries represent a statewide delivery infrastructure with a long history of connecting people with each other, with services, and with diverse physical and increasingly digital materials. Because our libraries are embedded in communities and campuses across the state, they are natural partners for the development and delivery of solutions to pressing issues, ranging from early childhood learning and workforce development to STEM education, consumer health, and rural sustainability. For example, we are discussing with Labor Director Edmonds how to extend their services beyond the 25 regional labor offices by collaborating with more of our 145 public library locations. In late January, the Commission convened our first-ever Public Library Directors Summit. We asked the directors to identify their top strategic priorities. Local economic development, broadband access, community engagement, and early literacy came out on top. Local workforce development, consumer health and wellness, funding, and partnering with schools also made the list. These strategic priorities show that libraries are going through a renaissance in terms of diversification of services and experiences they offer. Idaho libraries are evolving into hubs for education, work, health, and entertainment. At the same time, the walls of libraries continue to expand beyond the physical space with online resources, social media, and mobile services that are changing how collections and services are accessed. Because they serve people from cradle to grave, Idaho's librarians are uniquely situated to help Idahoans through the continuum of learning to read, then reading to learn, and to be successful in school, college or career, and in civic life. In fact, Idaho librarians merit wider recognition for the significant range of education opportunities they currently provide. Here are specific examples of state goals and issues that Idaho librarians are addressing in collaboration with the Commission and local partners. All three are interrelated. The Commission and the Idaho Library community are playing an important role in achieving the goal of at least 60% of Idahoans between the ages of 25 and 34 having a post-secondary degree or certification by 2020. To begin, as the Governor said, reading proficiency is the cornerstone of successful lifelong learning. It's the first step in a lifetime of education needed to meet changing technology and workforce demands. We know that children who start school behind tend to stay behind and have significantly lower graduation rates. The Commission's Read to Me program has been advancing early literacy through libraries since 1997, and its outreach programs can be seen in libraries from Aberdeen to Wallace. Programs like My First Books, Every Child Ready to Read, Books to Go, and many more focus on enabling parents to nurture a love of reading and getting more books into the hands of children who are unlikely to have any at home. Idaho's school libraries are integral to supporting student learning and achievement. To date, thanks to ongoing state funding, the Commission has provided $583,000 in grant funds to improve the collections and checkout policies in 139 elementary school libraries, with the results of getting many young children excited about reading. For fiscal year 17, we received 74 applications, requesting a total of $327,000. 
but we have only 200,000 to award. Clearly, there is a need for more elementary schools to start adequately funding their libraries as part of their support of reading proficiency. The Commission staff was pleased to see the legislature pass House Bills 451 and 526, which address the school literacy and reading intervention plans. The bills recognize the importance of library resources, both digital and print, in successful intervention, including library staff and the creation of a reading improvement plan and providing appropriate literacy training for paraprofessionals, including library staff, to ensure they have the knowledge necessary to effectively assist students. We plan to work with the Department of Education to help get the word out about these changes to both school administrators and school library staff, knowing that it's an opportunity that some school library staff will have to advocate for. Summer reading programs support college and career readiness by minimizing summer learning loss. Approximately 84,000 Idaho youth participated in library summer reading programs in 2015. In addition to the in-house programs offered by nearly every public library, more library staff are partnering with summer nutrition sites to follow the food and reach children who have limited access to books during the summer. Our Make It at the Library initiative just kicked off year four with the addition of eight new library teams to the cohort of 21. We've provided state-of-the-art robotics kits, electronic textiles, and 3D printers, along with extensive staff training in coding, basic circuitry, and design thinking. Our Make It initiative has been highly successful, attracting new audiences to public libraries, generating interest in science, and receiving national recognition from over a dozen entities. Our library makerspaces are encouraging experimentation and creativity with new technologies and tools. Rhea, a middle school student in a year-long Young Entrepreneurs Academy, had an idea for a product. She thought a prototype of her glue stick for butter would be effective, but had no idea where to begin. At her public library, staff gave her basic pointers about 3D design and programming the printer. After iterations of trying and redesigning, the prototype of SpreadWrite was ready for the event. Rhea earned first prize, $1,500 to invest in her product and a scholarship to attend the regional competition. Participating libraries report that whole families are coming to the library to create and experiment together. Why is this important? By providing easy and free access to these resources, makerspaces can inspire more people of any age to become entrepreneurs and to pursue careers in design, manufacturing, and related STEM fields. Also part of the 60 percent by 2020 goal is the Department of Labor's collaborative initiative to make career guidance resources more readily accessible. The first step was to identify the resources currently available. The Commission's contributions include the state-funded Lilly databases and the many career and college preparation resources in Learning Express Library. This effort also supports a second state goal, strengthening the talent pipeline. According to John Seeley Brown with Deloitte's Center for the Edge, the half-life of a skill is down to about five years. Technological advancements reduce the lifespan of specific skills, so the workforce must be prepared to constantly learn and retrain. Librarians are a part of the solution by providing not only access and guidance to a wide array of career information, but also skills training and business development resources available in the Lilly databases. A new resource in public libraries is Microsoft's Imagine Academy, with funding appropriated by the legislature to the Department of Education. Out-of-school adults can undertake the online curriculum at no charge to improve their Microsoft Office skills. As of January, 34 public libraries are registered providers, and the Imagine Academy enables many libraries to provide a unique opportunity for residents to significantly improve their employability. Millennials indicate that community and a third place after home and work is important to them. East Bonner County Library District is doing its part to address that issue with sandemonium. 
Spurred by the Commission's 2015 Libraries Building Communities Summit, a small group of library staff and community members organized an event to increase the number of millennials using the library, establish sustainable partnerships with community organizations, and spearhead a public event that would become an annual draw to benefit local businesses. The goal was to attract an audience of 75 people. In fact, people from ages 6 to 80-ish attended Sandemonium, a showcase of local enthusiasm and talent with informative panels, workshops, demonstrations, contests, and vendor booths. The event greatly exceeded expectations, with over 350 attendees and meeting all their goals. Now, a word about broadband and public libraries. I attended the meetings of the legislature's Interim Broadband Access Study Committee and jumped at the opportunity to provide testimony on the broadband needs of public libraries. As I told the committee in answer to a question, my hope was that the state would recognize broadband as a critical component of public libraries' service to their communities and support broadband access for them in the same way as for schools. And they did so. This year's legislature passed the Education Opportunity Resource Act to support Idaho's E-rate eligible entities, which includes public libraries, with technical E-rate security contracting and procurement guidance and funding. In addition, they appropriated $180,000 to the commission to reimburse the non-E-rate portion of public libraries' internet costs. I hope you agree that it's an interesting and rewarding time to be part of the Idaho library community. We've come a long way. So where do we go from here? We all are aware of the intrinsic value of libraries in communities across the state and that Idaho librarians and library services are evolving in the context of the digital age. However, this evolution is not universally recognized by local, state, or national policymakers and funders. The Commission is working on a process to change the conversation about Idaho libraries with an evolving document we're calling Strategic Priorities. Its purpose is to help focus the library community's collective outreach to key policy and decision makers, both local and state, about how libraries uniquely contribute to society in the digital age. The questions we're discussing include, what are the Idaho library interests and priorities for the next five years that should be emphasized to state decision makers? What are the library priorities that are likely to be of most interest to decision makers and influencers? And where might there be windows of opportunity to advance a particular priority at this time? In addition, using gatherings such as the ILA Annual Conference and others as an impetus, my hope is that a stronger community of practice will develop among Idaho's library staff and board members. A community of practice could promote discussions and sharing of information among library staff throughout the state, identify trends, and expedite your input and feedback to us on programmatic, legislative, and policy issues as they arise. With a cohesive community, I believe we can, together, more effectively react to both opportunities and challenges at both local and state levels. I believe we can help policymakers recognize Idaho libraries as described by our 2005 Library Futures Conference. I periodically look at the Futures Conference report and am struck by its relevance today. Here's the vision for Idaho libraries in 2020 that emerged from the 2005 conference. Supporting concepts described Idaho libraries in the future as providing unlimited access to global information, sharing resources and collections, vital institutions, a spark to community, a continued gathering place, a hub for interaction, a place to be inspired, and education centers where anyone can come to any library and learn to use global information resources in a high-touch atmosphere. Our futurist, Glenn Heemstra, asked us to imagine a young person's view of libraries in 2020, and this is what the participants imagined. Many Idaho libraries are providing a number of these experiences today, but few have the capacity to deliver all the resources and services needed to advance their community priorities. I invite you to join us in thinking about ways to change the conversation about Idaho libraries and librarians. To wide recognition of the value of our work by our respective communities, 
and invested in by our local and state policymakers for our unique contributions to society in the digital age. Thank you for joining us today. Please feel free to send us your comments, concerns, and suggestions at this address.